Last year, we visited the city of Kingston. Kingston is in the heart of eastern Ontario in Canada, about two to three hours away from big cities like Toronto, Ottawa, and Montreal. We stayed there for one night in a beautiful inn. And I must say, it's such a beautiful city, and it was so relaxing there. Now, this is the real reason we decided to visit Kingston. At that time, we were considering which other cities in Canada besides Toronto we could make our potential future home. And we wanted to give Kingston a chance and explore it. Although that will be a story for another time. At 1 p.m., we arrived at Kingston bus terminal with a mega bus. It was a Sunday in May, 21 degrees Celsius, perfect traveling weather. It was a three hour trip from Montreal, where we had previously stayed for three nights. Tickets were $56, by the way. And do I recommend the mega bus? Hmm, it's okay for short trips, but for more than three hours, I prefer taking the train. We were headed to the main retail street in downtown Kingston to get some lunch. Princess Street. Tons of options, but closed on Sundays. Luckily, this place here was open and looked so inviting. Alibaba Kebab serves Persian and Middle Eastern cuisine. And those lights really made the atmosphere. We got a pot of tea and also a few platters. It was super delicious. And the staff and the owner were really friendly. We were stuffed. It was time to head to the inn to dock our backpacks before moving on. It was a 15 minute walk to Harshalaga Inn. I was really hoping that the place looked as great as it did on the website. Its architecture is Victorian with red brick, woodwork and some gothic accents. At one point it was an apartment, at another the mayor of Kingston actually lived in it. Best of all, the price made sense at 212 Canadian dollars for a triple room. So large enough for me, my husband and my brother who traveled with us. Honestly, I couldn't find too many options when it came to accommodation in Kingston. So in case you watching right now are living in the city of Kingston, then please do let me know. What is the best hotel or inn at a medium range budget? Approaching Hoshalaga Inn, it did look stunning. Stepping in, and immediately there's a tea and coffee station for self-service. And the living room, the breakfast room, wow. Checking in went really fast and smooth, and the staff was just lovely. This was our room, the spire room, exactly as in the pictures. This is the queen bed, and next beside it, the single bed. And it's quite decent space, I must say. It does feel like being transported into a different century. And look at the high ceilings. And yes, despite its old furnishings, it did have a TV hidden here. Okay, let's check out the bathroom, very important. It's squeaky clean. Looking at the towels, they're spotless. And so were the linens, by the way. A window, great thing for bathrooms. Soap, shower gel was provided. Okay, and now the shower and bathtub, moment of truth, was also in perfect condition. No dirt, no mold. I could imagine myself taking a bath here. So we chilled a bit here and took some photos. And the next destination was going to be Martello Alley. Now that we put our backpacks here, walking around the city would be a breeze. Just too bad that at that time I didn't have this suitcase here yet. This is really lightweight and easy to handle. And this is going to come with me on one of my next trips. It's from the company Level 8, by the way, and I picked the color yellow because, yeah, I just love yellow, but don't worry, they have a ton of other options. Yeah, it's a really cool suitcase, and if you're also interested to get one for yourself, then you can use the code LIVINGINCANADA when you're checking out to get a 10% discount on your purchase. Thank you, Level 8, for sponsoring a portion of this video. Just a 10 minutes walk away. We passed the library, looking really fancy, by the way. Overall, Wellington Street has just really beautiful buildings. And what I also noticed was that it was so clean. Arriving at the intersection with Princess Street, just a few more steps and there we are at Martello Alley tucked in between Princess and Queen Street. Let's go in. This courtyard is so charming. We just found out that they were closing at 5 p.m. and it was 4.40 p.m. so just in time, we had 20 minutes left. The art pieces here are made by different artists and there's much more to see inside by the way. And Martello Alley represents these artists. Let's check out the back. Tons of paintings, watercolor and oil paintings. A lot of handicrafts too, like greeting cards. <laughs> this octopus here is so cool. 
If you love looking at art or buying art, then you can definitely spend a lot of time here. On their website, it even says that you can meet artists here and chat with them about their work, but on that day, there happened to be nobody. It was just us, so it kind of felt like a private viewing. And this place is owned and managed by a couple, by the way, and we had a really nice chat with them. They were so welcoming and such lovely people. So it was almost 5 p.m. It was time to move on. Next, we were going to Wolf Island and taking the ferry there. The owner at Martello Alley told us that there should be a ferry on its way pretty soon. And luckily, the ferry station was only six minutes away, so we rushed over. Here we are at the ferry station. Cars were lining up already, and while waiting for the ferry, we checked out the station building. If you want to know the schedule, by the way, you can check it here. By the way guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, then please let me know by hitting the like button. And in case you're from the city of Kingston, then please feel free to leave any additional information that you think might be useful to people watching this video down in the comments below. Thank you so much. And the Wolf Islander 3 has arrived. Talking about our route, if you look at this map here, last year in May, the ferry took us to Wolf Island Ferry Station. So not to Marysville. If you plan on taking the ferry, make sure you check the website for more information on where it docks. Looking for a nice spot to sit while the ferry was loading. And we were on our way. Such a nice feeling, the breeze. First thing I noticed from afar was this wind farm on Wolf Island and apparently there are 86 wind turbines on the island. Whoops, but what about tickets? You didn't see us buying any tickets, did you? Good news, tickets are actually free and I just think that's so awesome. And here we are, Wolf Island. We just started walking and enjoying the view. It felt very idyllic, you know, cows and horses. By the way, Wolf Island is part of Frontenac County and can be reached from both Canada as well as the US. but. What can you do here on the island? There's supposed to be a golf course in case you're into that and you can also cycle on the island. And then there's the town of Marysville that has restaurants, a bakery, a hotel, a bed and breakfast even. But it would take us almost an hour to walk there. So we checked out the schedule for the ferry back and just hung around near the ferry dock and had a really peaceful moment. So yeah, if we had more time, we would totally stay at that BNB, Blue Moose BNB, which has a rating of 5.0 on Google, by the way. And there's our ferry. And back on the ferry to Kingston. A short stay, but I really enjoyed the ferry ride itself. And it was really nice seeing the reverse view approaching Kingston. It was almost 7pm when we docked and we were just super thirsty. Time for some refreshments. Perhaps some beer? No, not yet. Later that night, we were going to go to a really cool bar, but first we were going to have some fresh juice. Now we were heading to the fruit festival. I know, such a crazy name, right? Back at Princess Street, passing by a bakery and some charming shops. And what I noticed was now that downtown Kingston was really easy to navigate. Look at those desserts. Pricey though. I wonder if this is one of those places only tourists go to. So we just stuck with the essentials, which was two glasses of pineapple juice, which was so refreshing. Now on to Fort Frontenac. At first, we thought it was just a historical landmark, and I'll explain in a bit what I mean by that. It was built in 1673 as a French trading post, but it turns out it's still in use nowadays as Canadian Army Command and Staff College. Oops, we were about to stroll in with our cameras, but were stopped. But at least we got a peek into what was a very impressive complex. And time for dinner now. We were going to eat at this place called Miss Bao Restaurant and Cocktail Bar. And again, walked along Princess Street, this time about a 13 minute walk. Really quiet on the streets and it kind of reminded me of German cities where after 8 p.m. there's just nothing going on. Kind of nice actually. I just wonder if it's always this quiet. So Miss Bao, 
I was just so excited about biting into Sampao that I totally ignored the part where it said cocktail bar. That would have been a warning sign that portions would be, well, cocktail sized. But the place was super cozy and we got a spot near the window. And after spending too much time looking at the menu, we settled on the pork belly pao. You just can't go wrong with that. And it didn't disappoint. It was so delicious. Just not sure if it was worth the price. But then again, it's a cocktail bar and it's not a place where you just gobble down your food like we did in like two minutes or so. <laughs> And as we love to spread our budget to experience different kinds of establishments rather than just spending a bunch of money in one place, we took our money to a brewery, walking through these alleys, passing by a ton of great looking bars, but don't get distracted, and also the city hall by coincidence. And there it was, next to what I guess was a fake but very fitting street name, Brewery Street. It was almost 9 p.m. and the place closed at midnight, so we got plenty of time. A bit about this place. It's Ontario's oldest brew pub, it says on the website. Established in 1986, there's also a patio and a courtyard, and inside it was packed with memorabilia. And I love the atmosphere. This is a place where you could just chat for hours with a good friend. So bring on the beer. And since our tummies were just about 10% full, also a nice portion of really crispy fries. Well done. Heading back to Hoshilaga Inn. The streets were super dark. We ended the night with an episode of Friends. That was day one. So far, I was really enjoying Kingston. It was stress-free, perhaps because we were on vacation and just not as hectic as it was in Toronto. And the inn was very comfortable. But breakfast next morning really exceeded my expectations. Breakfast was served in the living room, and we picked this table close to the window. The awesome thing here is that breakfast is not one of those bad buffets where food is cold and tastes like paper. Here at Hoshilaga Inn, the chef actually cooks each breakfast individually. And we had two options. I forgot exactly what those were though. There was more seating here and also outside. It was a really nice breakfast room, tastefully decorated. There was a fireplace and these super high ceilings. It was really a different experience compared to either staying at a like a best Western hotel or a five-star luxury kind of hotel. This here felt like home. And if my rating for the inn was, let's say, 8.5 or so, my rating for breakfast would be at at least 9 or a 9.5, and, and you'll see why in a moment. We could refill our coffees here, and there comes our breakfast. I know it doesn't look like much, but it was actually quite filling. Sunny side up eggs on potatoes, a few slices of perfectly cooked bacon, and some fruit. It, it just tasted very good. This really made the price we paid worth it. It was $212 for that triple room and breakfast for the three of us was already included. I really recommend this inn and I would definitely stay here again. So today's plan was to walk through Queen's University campus and get some coffee at Juniper Cafe. It was only a 5-10 to 10 minute walk away from Hoshalaga Inn. Most of you will know Queen's University, but just in case you're not familiar with it, Queen's University is one of the top universities in Canada and worldwide it's ranked 246. It's been going down though and I'm wondering why. In case any one of you know, please do let me know in the comments below. Oh, and fun fact, Elon Musk actually studied at Queen's University in the 90s. On our way to Juniper Cafe, a 15 minute walk along King Street West at the Waterfront Trail. And here at Breakwater Park, there's this really cool sculpture. It's called the Time Sculpture. It was made in the 70s by a Russian-born artist named Koso Elul. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Made of aluminum alloy and funded by donations made to celebrate Kingston's 300th birthday. It seemed some people hated it because it blocked the view, while others really loved it and found it stunning. But I really liked it. This is the St. Lawrence River, by the way. And over here, we have Gordowney Memorial Pier. In the summer, a lot of people actually swim here, and it looks like a really fun place to me. Changing rooms look legit. It looks clean for sure. 
Moving on, this road led us to Juniper Cafe. There is a center for performing arts and it just seems like the perfect spot for that if you ask me. Okay, so this is a place I could go to every day. The view is just splendid. I love how the seating is so close to the water and it's just lovely. Time for some coffee. The cafe is just so cozy. We got a tomato soup and a huge cookie, some drinks and coffee. And we even went for a second round because everything was really good. This place, I would say, is one of the places I enjoyed most in Kingston. Sitting here, you get this open and wide feeling like you're merging with the river. I know I'm getting a bit poetic here. The sky was getting really dark. Hear that thunderstorm? Uh-oh. <laughs> We were definitely not prepared for showers, so yeah, people started packing and we tried to rush back, but to where? Just started walking and in the end we had to seek shelter here. And yes, we finally ordered an Uber to, yes, time for beer, at the Merchant's Tap House back at, yes, you guessed it, Princess Street. Luckily, we were not too drenched, so heading in, it was really cozy here on these huge sofas. We quickly ordered some beers and also a serving, or was it two, of these really yummy chicken wings. And service here was really good and friendly and we got a chance to listen to some country music. Yeah, I definitely recommend this place. Okay, now I know that the order doesn't make super sense, but the rain stopped and we were off to get some coffee at Kingston Coffee House. The view is quite nice here. It's right across City Hall and the coffee was solid. After this short stop, we went back to the waterfront to the part we hadn't explored yet here, cut short by the thunderstorm. This is, I think, the other side of the City Hall. This is the Marine Museum and the Pump House. This was Kingston's waterworks from 1851 to 1952. It's a museum, but there are a lot of educational activities for kids. But as we went there last year, it was closed because of the pandemic. We then went back to the inn because we were going to take the VRL back to Toronto that night and during our little thunderstorm adventure, we left our backpacks with the hotel. So don't forget to pick them up. Bye bye Hoshilaga Inn, we had a really great time here. Before heading to the Via Rail station though, one last meal in Kingston. We were going to try how good the Korean food here is. So we picked this place called Soul to Soul. And yeah, the soups were very good. I just wish that there were more than just the three side dishes. After that, a 10 minute Uber drive took us to the VRL station at John Counter Boulevard. This was really an express trip to Kingston. Time to go home. So we thought that at the end of our vacation, which is always a bit depressing, we wanted to take the faster, more convenient VRL option instead of the Megabus. The ticket was $80 including tax, that was the escape fare, and it was about $10 to $20 more expensive than the Megabus. But unfortunately, again, the Via Rail was late. The trip was about two and a half hours back to Toronto, which meant we'd arrive home past midnight. But well, we had a really nice day here in Kingston, and that was all that mattered. So would I live here in Kingston, move to Kingston? I could see myself enjoying student life here. But for me, at this point of my life, at least I still prefer living in the big city. But more about that another time. Bye bye Kingston, thanks for watching and see you again in the next video. Now we were heading to the fruit fest- Ha! <laughs>